All right, everybody, here we are in the Hammer Down Motorsports shop. We've got our 2019 Ram Rebel here on the lift, and we've got a whole lot of stuff ready to go for it. We're gonna be taking apart the front bumper, getting the bash plate removed to do our color change on it, about to pull the tow hooks again, and yes, a whole lot of fun stuff to come for this truck. So definitely stay tuned. Okay, so we are underneath the truck here. I'm just kind of trying to figure out where all the bolts are for this bash plate. I did think I was gonna have to take out the tow hooks, but after looking at it, I think we might be okay leaving those in. But we do have the three bolts on top there, and then we have this one little nut on the side here. Then there's a clip, and it's also the same for the other side. And then we have over here this upper grill piece. And you can see that it doesn't actually go all the way through. It's got this little back cover. So if we were to put our light bar behind it, we would either have to take this back part off the black piece here, or we'd have to get another grill. So I wasn't sure if I could actually take this piece off. So I did end up buying another grill piece. This is the part number right there. And that will give you this entire grill piece like this. And your light can go behind it and the light can shine through no problem. You got your little park sensor things right here. And then up here we've got these open-ended kind of little provisions for screws, which I think if we just loosened off the top, we should be able to pop the top of this out. And then the bottom, I would just leave attached to the bash plate and then separate that once we got it out of the truck. But it kind of gives you an idea of what you gotta kind of get in there and remove. So let's start removing some of these bolts and kind of see where it takes us. So first up, we've got three 13 millimeters on the top on either side. We get our Milwaukee cordless ratchet in here. We get those zipped out on either side. And over here on the passenger side, this little wiring harness right here is kind of in the way of getting that last bolt out. So just get a trim tool in there, pop that connector out. I'm just gonna make this wire just attached here at this metal front piece. So I don't think it's gonna have to come with our bottom bash plate. And then we've got the same thing going on over here at the driver's side. Just gonna get your trim tool underneath that clip. Pop that up out of the way. Next we have these eight millimeter nuts on either side. Zip those out real quick. And I'm using my new Icon sockets from Harbor Freight and I'm actually really impressed with them so far. They've been working out pretty awesome. Next we're gonna remove the little clip that was on this plastic tab. This guy right here, you can see there's just kind of little tines in there that grab onto the plastic. And what I did is just took a flat blade screwdriver, just kind of pulled them back as I kind of worked it off of the plastic piece and you're good to go. So next up, I grabbed my eight millimeter ratchet wrench, went on top of our center grill piece and you'll see there's eight millimeter nuts up here. Just kind of follow along on the top, loosen these off, they're on studs. I think that the nut can actually stay on if uh, everything works out the way I want it to. But yes, I just loosened those all off and now I'm ready to remove the bolts for our center braces. So as far as the center support bolts, we got these removed, these are a 10 millimeter and then we're gonna take out the eight front bolts up in there, just kind of to go along basically where the bumper meets the top of the bash plate. Get those removed and see if this thing will come out of here. All right, so I've taken a bunch of the bolts out already. As I've shown you guys, we got all the ones that are in behind here out. And as it turns out, there's actually a bolt here and here and the same on the other side. And there's really limited access in behind here. There's like a piece of metal that's like almost right above where the bolt head is. And if I were to get them out, I would probably have to loosen them both at the same time and may possibly bring this down at the same time. And it's just, it's just really no access in the back there really. I mean, if you wanted to fight with it for hours, you probably could get it. But I think for as much as we're doing here, I might just pull the whole bumper off just to kind of make life a little easier for the reassembly process. And obviously once we have everything out, then we can kind of set up where we're gonna put our light bar get everything situated without having a struggle, and I think we should be good to go. So as far as the fog lights, the park sensors, and all the wiring that's in here, you don't have to rip all that out. Over here, if you just kind of pull this panel back, these two bolts, there is one big main harness plug right there. It's gonna remove that, and everything should go along with the bumper. And then we're gonna take the main bumper nuts off over here. There's two up there, and I believe there's one on the bottom. And you can see I have my rock light wiring and everything disconnected. I did have that run along here with the factory harness, but this is gonna stay with the truck. 
and hopefully everything will work out well. Just gonna get these nuts removed and hopefully the bumper comes free. And there it is everybody, bumper is removed. And I gotta say, I mean, that is the easiest way to do it. It's just a stud that goes onto these plates here in the front on three different positions on either side. And just the one big harness right here, which actually sits in the frame right there, but it's not in there very good. So it fell out pretty easily. But yeah, just this little lock tab right here, this little kind of cam lock set up for this harness and everything comes out pretty easily. So now we can go over to our bumper and work on it on the bench without having anything in our way, hopefully. And we can get this all stripped down and swapped over. So as far as the Dixie horn goes, this is the setup. And what I did, there's a factory hole on either side. And then I took a piece of flat bar, cut it to length, and then drilled all the holes so I could mount the horns onto it on the other side. And then I took some rhino lining or some bed coating and just coated it so it wouldn't rust. And then I was able to slip that inside here, bolt it up, and then I would just put the horns in individually just so this could all be in one place. I don't think I had enough room to get it in as one big unit. And then I put the compressor on the other side. I did have to drill one hole into this bracket here just to mount the compressor and ended up using a hose clamp and then a piece of rubber. This is actually a part for the rock lights. If you want to mount them on like a curved surface, they give you these. So it worked really nicely for that a little shock protection. And then this isn't going to come loose when we go banging down the trails with this truck. And the trick to the Dixie horn to make it sound authentic is they give you enough hose. Just do your math and make sure every one of these hoses is cut the exact same length and then it'll work perfectly. So now that the bumper is out on the bench, it's going to be a whole lot easier to work on. And now I can take off this entire piece right here and then it's going to allow us access to those two bolts on either side that we couldn't get at before. And to remove this plate, it looks like we got two bolts here. We have one down here and two bolts here on either side. We're going to get all those removed and hopefully we can get this whole assembly out of our way and get the bolts that we need to have removed taken out and then we can have our bash plate ready for paint. So after getting all of our wiring removed from this bracket, and getting all our bolts removed, well, they hit a couple more under here. There's this little plastic tab. You just kind of push this in, pull this up, and then we got some torques in there. So see what size those are, and hopefully that's the last of them. So you can just take this plastic piece and move it out of the way once you get these two little kind of push connectors released. It gives you lots of room to get at the three on either side, and these are a T40. And it wouldn't be a disassembly video without missing a couple of bolts. Well, we got one here and we got one more over here. So hopefully that is the last of them. All right, we have success. We got our plate removed and these are the bolts that I was talking about. These are kind of tricky and I'll show you why. Over here we have our plate and this is how it would be, you know, if you're looking at the front of the truck, the bumper obviously would be covering all of this but they have these on either side and these are right over top of those two little bolts. Makes them very tricky to get at. I think if you really try it hard enough, you might be able to get them, but I figured it was just easy enough to pull the bumper off. And you know, within about 10, 15 minutes here at this point, there is a little bit of hardware to remove, but all in all, I think this is gonna work out better for our situation. So now we can easily access our bolts. Let's get those removed. And then we can remove our lower grill section and our lower bash plate from our entire bumper assembly. And just as an overview of where all the bolt locations are on this bash plate, we have the three on either side. Then we have the little tab that goes through here. We've got the little eight mil nut for the stud. We have these two, which were the tricky ones to get at. Then we have all these top ones that go along here, which we were able to get at from the bottom. And then same thing on the other side, our two middle braces right here. And that's basically all there is to it. If you could have got those two other bolts out, with the bumper in the truck, it probably would have been doable to take it off in the truck. But like I said, it was just a lot easier to kind of go at it this way. Well, everybody totally disregard that part number because, well, as you can see, this one here is obviously for a different bumper. I got it online and I guess the person was misinformed about it actually fitting a Rebel bumper because it definitely does not. You can see that this one is actually shorter and where it mounts here on the bottom is different. So yeah, just bought a $50 grill that never gonna, probably gonna be able to use for anything. So 
if anybody needs one of these for a non-rebel bumper, I have one. So now to get this grill piece removed, I've already got all of the studs on this side removed. You just gotta kinda slide them out of that little groove in there, and then this thing just kinda pops out of here. But you can see on the back, this piece here is removable. There's all these little tabs. You just kind of got to lift them up, work your way around, and this whole back piece should pop off. So you shouldn't have to worry about buying one of those in the first place. So that's kind of why I do these videos. You guys can learn from my mistakes. You just basically pop off all those clips, take that back piece off of your factory lower grill piece, and you're good to go. You just discard this. If you're going to put a light bar behind it because you don't need it anymore. And then we can just go ahead and put this back into the bumper. All right, so we got our factory piece back in, as you can see. Now we are good to go for our light bar. And we have all of our little push pins put back in. I put all the little studs back in and tighten down the nuts. So it's good to go as far as that is. And I got to admit, I mean, it's a little bit more tedious than it should have had to be. I mean, you could have just had a couple of clips or something like that instead of all of what goes on to remove this just to get this little back piece off. So you can run a light bar, but you can see how it's all done. And if you guys are committed to getting a light bar on your truck, this is kind of what you're in for. So next up, we're gonna prep our bash plate for the Plasti Dip. So I'm gonna remove these little plastic buckets. It's the same idea as that lower grill setup. You just undo these four little studs there. Just get the eight millimeter nuts loose and you should be able to actually just pop them out backwards and then push the plastic piece forward. Very weird design, but I guess that's what we got to do. So let's get it done. And there we go, simple enough. You got these little kind of plastic pieces that you push down. And we have the same style, little square piece with a stud on it and the nut. And those have to come out in order to let this out. That's just kind of the way the design is, which is kind of weird, but either way, there it is. So now that we got this all nicely stripped down, I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna just kind of wipe it down with some alcohol. Make sure there's no oil or anything like that on it from touching it, fingerprints, all that kind of good thing. And we should be ready for our first coat of Plasti Dip. All right, so we got our bash play here on the back of the F-150, which is also our high-tech paint booth. It's gonna take a little bit of alcohol, clean all this mud and everything off of here, get it a nice clean surface. And we're ready for our first dust coat. So here it is, our first coat. You can still see there's a lot of silver showing through this and everything like that. But what you want to do is just kind of lay down a base, kind of nicely dust it over and give it a little bit of dry time. And then we're going to do another coat very similar to this. And then on our third coat, we're really going to lay it on thick. And we're probably going to end up doing somewhere around five or six coats, just kind of giving it about 10 minutes, 15 minutes in between, depending on your temperature for your dry time. And then we should have a really nice product in the end. Well, everybody, we got our Plasti Dip all finished up for our bash plate. And well, here it is. Oh, yes. I wasn't entirely sure about the white at first, and I guess we're really not gonna know until I actually put this back together with our bumper. But I just think the white truck with the black bumper, the red hooks, and now with the bash plate being painted white or Plasti Dipped, it's really, really gonna give us a little bit more contrast there, especially with our little accent pieces in here for the black around the tow hooks. It's really gonna bring everything together on this truck, and I think it's gonna look absolutely awesome. So definitely drop in the comments, what do you guys think of the white bash plate? And I mean, like I said, we're gonna have to put this all together to really decide, but did I make the right decision? Yes or no? So that's where we're gonna end off our video for today. I have to let that nicely cure, and I might try to see if I can get more plastic dip, maybe put a couple more coats on before I put the entire bumper back together. But then we do have our light assembly to go in there, get that all straightened away. But that will be on part two of this bumper removal, assembly, customization, all that kind of good stuff. And we're gonna show you guys how we're gonna get the Dixie Horns to work with the Rough Country light bar setup and brackets. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.